to have you. It's an honor to be here today. So blessed. Thank you, praise worship team. Would you thank God for them this morning and this media team that's out here early this morning preaching around the world today in this early hour. I was uh, just very blessed as I'm watching the church assemble and do things just everywhere. It's multitasking, crazy, especially not, it's all the time, but especially more, I think, accented during this time of the season we're in. Uh, Lamplighters uh, had a great meeting. Uh, what night was it? Friday night. I was traveling. I was in Indianapolis ministering, and many of you gathered here, and it was a great turnout. I think we found out now that we have a gym for a reason. That room's small back there. And so it's good that you've outgrown another facility, amen? And so in the gym we go, and, and we go with joy, amen? But I heard great things about the meeting that you guys had, the fellowship, and I would encourage all of you, uh, 50 and above, 55 and above, the 40-year-olds were kind of grumbling, I'm not old enough, I'm, not, I'm too young to go with the old folk, and so uh, that's okay. If you 40-year-olds went, we appreciate you, we want you, but lamp lighters are those uh, who uh, light the lamp and keep it lit, amen? And we need more of you to do exactly what you've done and to come together and share each other, amen? It's a great time when you do things like that. I was so blessed, I was getting phone calls as I was in Indy uh, ministering, and uh, it's just refreshing to know that the body of Christ's matrix has so much uh, to do with each other and with the community. So God bless you and the lotters or who put this together. I asked them to do that, and they were gracious enough to do it, and uh, uh, I just think it's awesome. And so those who got around them and helped them, and I got a feeling there'll probably be a lot more of those things coming in the near future. It's just a blessing for the house of God. So God bless Cross Tab this morning, and you ought to give yourself a hand for the great people you are. You're awesome. You're just great people. Uh, today's December the 19th, and I've asked uh, some prophetic words to come in, and it's good to have Prophet Aguilar and Sister Aguilar with us this morning. You know that prophet fell down some stairs not long ago and the enemy tried to take him out but he's up and you can't put a good dog down can you amen can't mess him up and so we're good to have you with us this morning we honor you guys this morning our camp director for the state of indiana should be in late he texts me about five o'clock this morning and when you're trying to get your tribe together especially as big as that one uh, sometimes it's hard to get on time and so he's going to try to be here at 10 a.m he said so if you see them coming in and that gaggle a bunch you praise god for them and we'll honor them and and, and recognize them when they get here at 10 a.m this morning coming in to be with their family today's the 19th of december before i have this denise come up for a moment i want to remind you some things about the significance of this month as i look at the calendar laid out in a most peculiar way a very pr prophetic uh, the first Sunday of this month that I talked to you about was the 5th. It hit the 5th. The 5th Sunday was the first Sunday of the 12th month of 2021, which signifies, we all know, 5 signifies grace. The second Sunday of this month, we find, last month, uh, or last Sunday, uh, was the 12th month. 12th is the most unusual number in God's numbering system because it points to perfection when it comes to who rules and governs. I think in the 12th month, who rules and governs, it's a good thing, the last month of a, of a year, to recognize who Christ is. We, are, we, we focus in this month about who he is. Not only does his grace begin to hit us, to be thankful for the grace God has given us. And also to be thankful because we see, we come to realize who, is, who governs and rules. God's in control. Today's the 19th. 19 is a significant number when it comes to the kingdom work of God. 
because it's, it, it, it actually is a sign that it's time for spiritual awakening to come and grow. Not to just be aware in our spirit, but to learn that we need to grow in our spirit. And we find that spiritual maturity all of a sudden is falling in place. So we're having all of a sudden uh, in 2021 at the end of the year of the decade of pay of the mount, we're finding the grace of God. We're beginning to see how thankful the grace of God is. Not only that, but who is in charge? We find out Republicans and Democrats ain't got it figured out. We find out that God's kingdom is starting to rise up. And by the way, can I say and remind you again, the casino ain't built yet. Can I remind you again this Sunday that the ground has not been broken yet? Can I remind you again this Sunday, like I told you, that in the scriptures the enemy turns on one another and they turned on one another in final lawsuits against each other. Praise the Lord, because I know the way that our great government works, that the law, a lawsuit can last for years. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hey, hey, hey. Wow! I'm telling you, it's time for those sinners to give them God's got grace. He's going to show them time to get right with God before the flood hits. Come on, somebody. So it ain't built yet. You casual Christian gamblers, it's about God's giving you grace to get saved. Amen? Come on, man. So we're finding this great awakening hidden, uh, not only but the nations of the world. So it's December the 12th, 2021. It's also 12, 19, 21. So we find that the 12th month is perfection. Somebody say perfection. Lift your hands for a moment before we go further. Father, we're praying in the 12th month for perfection that points to government and rule that your Holy Spirit begin to work on all nations. We pray that in the midst of your hand and your people and first in your houses and then around the world, the Job 2.28 begins to unfold. Father God, your hand is upon us and let us be reminded of that and proclaim it 2021, December, this year, right now, your government rule is in our midst. We give you glory, somebody say amen. The 19th is a significant number because in Scripture we find how it passes through generations. It begins to show us that the perfection, the timing, the things are changing because there's 19 script days that are scripture, scripturally based that teach us how to worship God. Passover is one day. Day of unleavened bread, seven days. We find that Pentecost is one day. Day of trumpets is one day. Day of atonement is one day. Feast of tabernacles, seven days. Last great days, one day. Total them up, there's 19 days in Scripture that point to celebrating significant events of God and make us aware. For the 19th Psalm says this, For the heavens tell of the glory of God and the expanse of heaven, declaring the work of His hand. God's in control. Somebody say that with me. God's in control. Day after day He pours out speech. Night after night He reveals His knowledge. There's no speech, no are there spoken words from the stars for their voice, that his voice is not heard. Yet their voice is quite evident. It's gone out through all the earth, through all the ages, the words to the end of the earth. In them and in the heavens he has made a tent for the sun, which is a bridegroom. There is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man runs its course. For the sun is rising, is from end of the earth and the heavens, and its circuit to the other ends of them. There's nothing hidden from its heat. For the law of the Lord is perfect, flawless, restoring, refreshing the soul. And the status of the Lord are reliable. The statutes of the Lord are reliable and trustworthy, making wise the simple. For the precepts of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous and altogether they are more desirable than gold. Yes, more than gold, sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, reminded, illuminated, and instructed in keeping them. There is a great reward. Who can understand his errors of omission, acquit of, of hidden unconsciousness, intended faults? Also, keep your servants from presumptuous, deliberate, willful sins. Let them not rule and have control over me. Then I will be blameless, complete, and I shall be acquitted for the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in the sight of the Lord. O oh Lord, my firm, infirm, immovable rock, for you are my redeemer. David wrote this, and he began to give us this very, very, very uh, uh, beautiful uh, picture uh, that God is a living testament, and his glory and his power is everywhere. So number 19 also signifies that there must be more. Somebody say, must be more. And with that, I just I, I can go on and on. I'm not going to do that. But I do want to tell you something that's very powerful. In this, in this, this 19th day of the 12th month, 2021, the mouth of pay, 
it signifies a sign of completion. There's many right now are in transition. COVID has showed us that. We have to do business a different way. And God's pointing us to a direction that he's beginning to show us that doors are shutting, but new doors are opening. We're beginning to find out that the particular cycle that's taking place, and I believe that God showed me this, that it's the end of the old and the beginning of the new. And not only a new year, but there is a new move of God on this earth. It's been prophesied, it's been foretold, and many people are starting to be awakened. So do not take light of these things that are spoken. Take these into your heart, because God has, he has, he has, he has, he has, wow, he has, he has willfully in his plan set forth the precepts that we're walking through today. Time short, my friend, and God's on his way, and we are to be joyful, not fearful. We are not to walk through the COVID, through the pandemics, or the things of this earth with fear that I've seen set within the churches. We're to walk with boldness and know one thing, for to be presence of the Lord is everything. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Paul says, I long to be absent from this body and be present with the Lord. America, you hear me today. Many of you are too, have, you are too much at peace with being here and not prepared to be there. You hear me again? America, you are too content with this earthly tent and your heart's not content to understand that heaven is your home. Father, bless us today as we march through these holidays without fear. Father God, with faith. That's being tested, by the way, Lord. And we're thankful that you're testing our faith. Father God, through this test, you're walking us from being religious and be, instead of and being and beginning to be faithful. You're teaching us that our identity is only in you. And that's all we need. It's not in what we do, it's who we know and how we do it that reflects who you are. So today, on this 19th day of the 12th month of 2021, with all our weaknesses, we stand strong because Christ is our Savior. Somebody say amen. Show that video quickly, and then we're going to have Miss Denise to come up for a moment for the people. Oh, I feel greedy. I wonder what it would be like to be born in a manger. Yeah. I wonder whatever happened to baby Jesus. He, he grew up. What? Wait. So you're saying that the baby Jesus Christmas story is the same as the adult walk on water Jesus? Yeah. Thanks, honey. <laughs> wow, I just never really put the two concepts together. <laughs> Wonder what happened to that guy, huh? <laughs> he, he went to the cross. That's the same guy? So what you're saying is baby Jesus is the same as cross Jesus? Yeah. I mean, there's some time in there, right? I mean, he, he grew up, he taught people, he lived a perfect life. He died on the cross and came back to life. And, you know, now he lives in our hearts. That's the same guy? The Jesus that lives in our hearts? Okay, I was really, oh, wow. Okay, I never really put all those guys together, you know? Only one guy. I tell you this, here's an idea. Maybe we stop just making Christmas all just this once a year isolated thing, but we make it an ongoing story about the salvation in our hearts and lives. Up top. That's the idea. same Jesus. Can you give him glory in this house today? <laughs> so many, unfortunately, many people categorize that we know. I just want to give you a little Christmas cheer for a moment. I'm going to ask Denise to come up and, and uh, 
We thank God. Why don't you give it up for Denise and Brian? They travel around the world. And I really felt led to ask her to come up this morning for a few moments and just uh, maybe reflect on a few things uh, before we go any further. Hallelujah. He did give me a warning. He told me to prepare for this. And as he was, he was sharing his heart there, I thought, I said to Brian, he's been in my notes again. So what you're going to hear from me is probably going to be more confirmation. I'm just going to basically repeat. I can just stand up here and say what he, what he said. <laughs> just like that same Jesus, that same Jesus, same Holy Ghost. And... Um, <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll start with um, last year week. He said something about 2022 being about all about Jesus and about the Word of God, that He is the Word. And, I, you know, that, that really rang true in my spirit. But I really wasn't thinking about that as I was seeking the Lord and praying in the Holy Ghost. The first phrase that came up in my spirit was this word out of Luke 18, 8. Yet the Lord would say unto you, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith in the earth? And I thought, wait, now okay. But those are connected. Jesus being the word and him looking for faith is connected, and I'm going to connect those dots for you here real quickly. Because you know, haven't we heard it all our lives? Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming soon. And yes, we know that. If, <laughs> if anybody has any sense about him at all, look around. The signs of the times are there. Jesus is coming, and his coming is imminent. So when he comes, will he really find faith in the earth? What's that got to do with Jesus being the word? Have you not heard what is written? It's dealt to every man the measure of faith. Do you not know that it's exactly what we need? What's needed in this hour? What's needed in this hour? Faith. We don't, we're done. We should be done with how many are you done with fear? Come on. Make that commit with me today. I'm done with fear. Uh, he's looking for faith. He's not looking. For, he's not going to be looking in the corner where people are coward. He's looking for faith. And those who stand up and say, here I am, Lord, send me. Oh, that's not in my notes. <laughs> the seeds of faith have been planted in our heart. It's, he's dealt to every man the measure of faith, the measure of faith. It's in there. All we have to do is water it. How do we water it? Simple. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Jesus is the word, 2022, the second part of the Godhead. He was, he is the word incarnate. He is the light of the world. It's faith and faith alone that will qualify us to walk through the days ahead of us. I'm not a faith preacher, but here we are. We've come to such a time as this. If we can do anything with this day or year ahead of us, we've got to put the word of God in front of us to keep the faith of God burning in our hearts so that when he comes, he's going to find faith in us. The seed is there, and watering it is simple. Get your Bible out and read it. Jesus is the word. And if we're going to stay anchored when the seas are tossed, if we're going to stay anchored when things start shaking, if they're not already shaken out, you stay anchored. You stay anchored by staying in the word. It's the foundation of our faith. Amen? I'm not trying to beat a dead horse, but I'm telling you, that's the word he gave me. It came up in my spirit loud and clear. In the days that lie ahead of us, the Lord would say to you, only believe. Only believe. That's what it means to have faith. Only believe. Jesus 
uttered those words to Jairus when every circumstance around him was contrary to the miracle that his daughter needed. Are the circumstances contrary? Come on. We're living in some pretty contrary days, are we not? Jairus was faced with contrary circumstances. And Jesus said, fear not, only believe. How are you going to hang on to your faith? How are you going to believe you're going to get in the word? How many of you are going to promise you're going to get in the word in the days ahead? We've got to stay anchored. It's the only thing that will sustain us and keep us anchored in the days to come. Hallelujah. Now, Apostle, I'm going to direct this to you. I heard Keith Taylor say this once. It was in a private meeting. Now it's going out over the Internet. He said it from his heart. He said, Terre Haute is my city. He's an apostle, and he's an apostle to this city. So the word to the city, I'm delivering to you, brother. You said it. You're talking about the casino. In the context of what all he said about that, hear the word of the Lord. The Lord would say, the locomotive is on the tracks, and the tr this train is bound for glory. There's nothing that will derail it. My glory shall visit this city, bringing with it good and perfect gifts reserved for this great end time move of God. The enemy has a strategy, but I have a plan. <laughs> now is the time for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to take a stand. Having done all to stand, stand therefore, right? Some would say to you, apostle, what are you standing there for? And the Lord would say to you, just keep standing where you are. See, I see the stand of faith you've taken. And in due season, you will see the hand of God. You will not be forsaken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Due season. Hear our prayer. Hear, Lord, hear our prayer that our faith would not fail. Give us wisdom and godly leaders that will stand with us to the right and to the left. Ooh, mm -hmm. hmm. Concerning the United States of America, <laughs> consider the signs that have already been given. Now, I might talk a bit about that. And there's signs actually that have been last year this time, December 12th, 2020. De December 21st, 2020, there was a sign that hung in the heavenlies on the southwest sky. There were two planets aligned, Jupiter and Saturn, and everybody called it the Christmas star. Right? All right, so that's not really what it was, but I promise you that God does mark time, and he marks times in the heavenlies. But if you want to find out what those signs mean, you're going to have to find out how the Jews look at it, you're going to go back to go back to the Hebrew. And those two planets aligned in the sky, do you know what the Jews call those planets? They don't call them Jupiter and Saturn. You know what they call them? Jupiter is justice. And Saturn is rest. All right, so here's the scripture. Isaiah 51, 4 and 5. Now, again, I'm going to say this again. Consider the signs that have been given and continue to stand in my authority and to walk in my grace. Listen to me, my people. Give ear to me, O my nation. This is out of Isaiah 51, verses 4 and 5. For law will proceed from me, and I will make my justice rest as a light to the people's. My righteousness is near, my salvation has gone forth, and on my arm they will trust. 
That is the word of the Lord. That's what he was marking with time. And I am standing in that place. I am still standing, having done all to stand. Stand therefore. God is going to cause his justice to rest upon his nation. This nation. Glory. To capitalize on that, in July of last year, or this year, you know, we, we all have, we have these full moons and everybody, they all have their little names, like June is the strawberry moon, July is the book moon, but actually there's another name for the, the moon in July, did you know that? There are two terms that are, one's a little less common, but the full moon in July is called also called the thunder moon. And when it lined up in the sky in the middle of July last year, over there on the horizon, there was the thunder moon, Jupiter, and Saturn. The thunder, justice, and rest fully aligned in the night sky. And the Lord added this scripture to it, Joel chapter 3, verse 16. The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and the heavens will tremble. Thank you for singing that song this morning. But the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold. We cannot live our lives waiting for the thunder. I mean, we don't say it's going to thunder. We say it's going to rain, right? We sometimes adjust our schedule according to the rain, but we don't adjust our schedule according to the thunder. We don't live our lives waiting for the thunder, but it's coming as surely as the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So hear the word of the Lord for the body of Christ. Isaiah 43, 40, verse 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, now is the time to prepare. We must prepare the way because Jesus is coming and he is coming soon. As part of the Christmas story, we often hear Luke 1, 17, quoted speaking of John the Baptist and his birth. It's a prophecy about John the Baptist. It said he will go, forth, he will go before him, Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers of the children, the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John the Baptist came to prepare the way for the first coming of Christ, or who prepares the way for the second coming? In days gone by, the prophets have said that in the time of the end, the spirit of Elijah would once again come upon the church. Why? To prepare a people ready for the Lord's return. Founded in the word of God, of course. How do we prepare with the word of God? <laughs> Now is the time. The way must be prepared. The hearts of the fathers must turn to the children. The children must turn their hearts to the Father above. The disobedient must lay aside their distractions and exchange them for wisdom and truth. Jesus is coming, and he's coming soon. Psalm 23, 5 says, You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. The days that lie ahead will likely not be too pleasant for the unrighteous. Darkness is trying to overtake, but thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. They will be fierce, there, there will be fearsome days for many, but not you. Why? He's not looking for fear in you. He's looking for faith, right? The Lord, he's prepared a table for those who love him. 
and are called according to his purposes, and he's filled it with everything good. You can still enjoy goodness when all hell is breaking loose around you, but you're not going to find it eating the bread of fear and distraction. The only way you're going to find everything good is by eating the word on a daily basis. His word is bread for us. His word is bread for us. Amen. Brian and I have started taking communion every day. We take it in the privacy of our home. Why? Because he says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show forth the Lord's death till he come. He's coming. We're, we're my putting ourselves in remembrance of that covenant every day. That's just us. Personal conviction. Take that for what it's worth. All right. So one last section here about preparing the way of the Lord. To ministers and lay leaders, fivefold ministers all. I hear loud and clear in my spirit today, make ready, make ready, make ready a people prepared for the Lord. A people of one heart and one mind, fully prepared for the suddenlies of God. There will be no time to prepare later. A people poised to hear the cries of those in need, moved with compassion and qualified as vessels of honor, ready to manifest his glory, prepared for every good work. A generation that will set their hope in God above and a chosen generation, diligent, holy, without blemish, blameless. A people who fear the Lord, ready to meet their maker, a people prepared for his coming. So as we wrap up 2021, let's prayerfully watch and listen. Here's a fresh word, God's prevailing wind. We can't prepare for the thunder, but we can listen for the prevailing wind. In the city and in the field, let me say that again. As we wrap up 2021, let us prayerfully watch and listen for God's prevailing wind in the city and in the field. May God's bright wind of the Spirit prevail over every obstacle for the sake of his beloved people and his glorious bride. Luke 18, 8. When the Son of Man comes, will he truly find faith in the earth? Amen. Amen. Just lift your hands for a moment. Father, we receive the prophetic that's come forth today in the challenge. Let us be awakened, Father God, to the fact that you are in control. You are the government. You rule over it. And Father, all nations must bow. One day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are the Lord. Father, we are a people of faith. And Father God, we are a movement of people who move by faith, not by sight. And so today, we give you glory in this house. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Woo. Amen. The emphasis has been the last few weeks of the teaching and beginning to require that we use the altars. I am uh, uh, quickly going to remind you of that fact that there's not a day that we assemble together that we not spend time in an altar before we hit the streets of faithlessness. It's imperative that the house of God, true warriors, understand how important it is to go to the strategy room before you go out and initiate in the battle. And it's very, 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 very important that we come and strategize in the presence of the Lord and lay our, bring our best laid plans and our ministries before him. Because in a twinkle of an eye, in a moment of one word, he can change our direction and keep us from a lot of misery if we'll listen to him before we go and, and go into humanity. You're dealing with a lot of lost people, and it's just not lost people, 
It is people of all stratuses and all areas, and they're caught up with all kinds of demonic activity. And let me tell you, you just don't storm through hell and go after hell unless you are strategy, strategied up and fired up. Is anybody in this house right now? Good warriors never leave the camp without provisions to step into the battle. Ever. And so I want to emphasize that you understand the importance of I don't care if you're handing out pencils on a corner, you need to be first in the fire of God. It's imperative that you get this in your spirit in the age that we're moving into because we're surrounded by people who can show the, uh, forth God's glory in a dimension of flesh, but never walk in the dimension of the glory that will cause demonic spirits to go. And people are walking out ministering in the streets and full of the devil. Pastor, how can that be? It's because they, they got too many hurts and hang-ups in their lives. And they, you'll never be released in the fullness of God unless you get into his fire. You have to be a firebrand, amen? So I just want to challenge you. It's not what we do that emphasizes anything unless we know who he is. Romans chapter, out of the uh, first Romans chapter, verse 19, he writes this, because that which may be known of God is manifest among them, for God has manifested it to them. So we understand that the number that we're in today, this, this, this strategic, and by the way, uh, the full moon was the 18th was last night of December. It's the last full moon of 2021, whenever you said that. And it brought in my mind. And the name of that full moon, one of the names or the predominant name of the full moon of December is called the cold moon. It's the smallest moon. It's the December, it's the cold moon. It's the winter moon. And so we can see we're well, stepping in this week into winter solace. We're going into the first days of winter. And so last night was, was that you had just walked out of the longest night of the year. Come on, somebody. So you're going into a new shifting, new pattern, new change. Lift your hands, Father, right now. Uh, out with the old and in with the new. Father, we're celebrating before we go into this January, right now, according to the sign that you have given us in heaven that the prophet begin to release, Father. Right now, we stand amazed that there's an actual sign for us. And Father, we are awakening to the fact that we are individually learning to spiritually grow and mature, Father God, and to understand, Father God, that we need to take things in consideration that you're speaking through your spirit. The very components of your activity is driving us to the fire of your presence. Father, we are excited in the name of Jesus. Amen. I was often thinking about this week, Mother Teresa, whether you like her or whatever. Uh, let me tell you about her. That woman walked in pandemics, and she walked in uh, all types of sickness, and she ministered. She didn't walk in fear. She didn't walk around. People were in need. She walked in the midst of humanity in their sickest hours, their dying breaths. In, in places where they told her to, 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 to hide out and stay away, John G. Lake walked into the plagues of Africa and dared them to lay it in his hands, which they did. They laid the plague in his hands and put it under a microscope, and the plague died in his hands. And he ministered his life in Africa among people who were in pandemic. I want you to, I want you to learn from the Word today, faith cannot be a factor in your life or your actions. Doesn't mean that you, you, you don't use wisdom. How many know that wisdom is not fear? If your wisdom drives you to fear, then that's not wisdom. That's demonic leading. And I want to shake that off of us in the houses of God for you to understand that there's a great pleasure now in the presence of God and ministering and moving in the house of God without fear. Somebody say without fear. So we find components of 19. I wasn't going to go here, but I am now because of the word that was brought forth. Both of the numbers we find out of 19 is so important. The number one that makes up 19 according to God, one in God's plan and is talking about the one true living God. He is the great I am. The word came through Moses in a broken people that needed to move forward in a place where they were under bondage and they were under attack. What happened was God came in and he said, Moses, 
And Moses says, I'm a stutterer. He said, get your brother. It's going to get done, and I'm going to use you and your lineage because your lineage is more important than your comfortable fact. You hear me? Every one of you have a call. Every one of you have a purpose. You are to leave a lineage uh, for your children to follow. The Bible says that we are to be repairers of the breach. That means we're to go into every crack in a foundation that's around us. We're to repair that. He says that the Bible tells us that we are to couple with Christ, and we are to lay forth the path. For people to dwell in. That means that pathway that the word will clear out is the way to the cross. And the way to the cross has been too mucked and too mired through Christianity that I call Western Christianity. When we look at a Christ that's in, so septic and so antiseptic that nobody wants to move in faith. They just want to work in religion. And I break that spirit in the name of Jesus. It's penetrated even the Pentecostal faith to no longer do we even pray in tongues. No longer do we even read the Bible. And sure enough no longer do we run to an altar to get set on fire that God burn the flesh out of us so that we can go out and walk in a world and lay hands on the sick and they'll recover when the drunks come in and let me tell you something many services I've been in just this Saturday night I can tell you that you when tell you get around drunk folk they'll sober up when the Holy Ghost is on them I watch drug addicts running later they're, they're junk in the altars you've seen it you've been in it it happens when we Understand the components of God's plan and presence. Just not reading the print on a Bible. He's real. Come on, somebody. The number one talks about something that's being prepared. It means that we have number one talks about godly leadership, and one indicates a godly uniqueness and independence. How many of you know that we have an independence because we are have a one true God? Amen. There's nothing to clog up the pipes. We walk and flow because He's God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is three in one. He is the triune God, not three gods. One God who has a personality no different than you. Who is a husband? Who is a wife? Who is a mom? You are made up of different components uh, and different operations it's not titles it's who you are I'm just not called a dad you may call me a dad but I have to operate as a dad I have to be a dad you can't just say I'm a husband I have to actually be a husband so it's just not a title it's who I am come on somebody and he is the great I am the great I am that said Moses you go get my people and you're going to lead them out and it's not going to be easy Give us faith, O oh Lord, more faith than we've ever had in this year coming. Because let me tell you, the sum of up, number 19 means new doors are going to open for you. 19 today begins to tell us as the, as the, as the star in heaven gave you evidence that what has just passed was the longest night. You're going into, the Bible tells us, that you may weep all night, but joy comes in the morning. Today, somebody ought to shout. Last night was the solid, the 18th on Saturday night. Right now, great news, my friends. God is giving us great joy. Somebody praise him on the 19th of December in the 12th month of still a brand new year. There's still a lot of joy. God's ready ready to pour out right now for you. Give him glory in this house. Wow! Hallelujah! It's a sign of completion. That's what today is. It's a sign of completion. It's the ending that leads you to a new beginning. And so as particular cycles of our life has passed, there's a new unfolding. And I got news for you today, my friends, no matter who you think you are, how brave you think you are, you cannot live yesterday again. <laughs> Some of you say amen to that. That's why the Bible gives us this great promise, a new beginning, that said old things have passed away. All things have become. Amen. Lift your hands. Father, today. Whew. Today is a new day. Father God, help us, Father God, in the visitation. Step into our, our daily routines and make them not routines. And make them a bold adventure, an opportunity that we can clearly walk boldly. Father, as your word says, where no Holy Ghost man's ever walked or woman, we're going to walk in a place to show them not religion, but show them Christ. Can somebody say amen in here? Give me a hand clap of praise for a moment. You want to get ready? <laughs> I love it when God wrecks a good sermon, but he does a better one. Out of Luke, I, want to, I just want to point out something he says in Luke chapter 2 verse 9, the premise of what we're talking about. He says, and lo the angel of the Lord came upon them. And when the angel showed up, somebody say angel. 
know some of you get real nervous when you speak angels. We don't worship angels, but they're here. It's a fact it is. And the Bible says that in Luke, with among those shepherds, common folk, the angel came on them, came in, invaded their life. What would happen if you realize how many angels are trying to invade your life on a daily basis? Think about that. How many angels are trying to invade your life on a day? How many of you, now don't, I'm not going to give you a quiz here, but I am uh, in your spirit. How many of you actually could say, I've, I've seen an angel, or I have been touched by an angel, or I've been around angelic activity? And if, if to be honest with you, if I don't get 100% and it goes like this, then your angel detector's off. You don't read your Bible. The Bible says you're surrounded by them all the time. Constantly, even as strangers, you don't need, you, uh, unawareness. And you say, if he says you can be unaware that angels are around you, guess what's the opposite of being unaware? That means you need to be aware. So maybe some of us need to start praying that we don't worship angels, but we, have, we need them. The Bible says they're messengers. It says the angel or the messengers of the Lord came on them, and then the Bible says an angelic visitation in that throne, in that presence, the Bible says the glory, that's manifested presence. That's Shekinah, as the old timers used to say. The Bible says that the glory of the Lord shone all about them. What happens, what it means is that when the glory of God comes in and a messenger has a word for you for that predominant time that you're in, that season, or whatever situation you're going in, in other words, he outshines the fear. Now why? Because it says this, they were afraid for a moment. It says they were so afraid. In other words, they weren't afraid about what was taking place. They knew who God was. It's that this was this magnificent manifestation of God that they weren't accustomed to. Oh, God, give us that type of revelation, that there's such a magnificent presentation of your presence that it just rattles us. The Lord's Bible says, came on them, and a heavenly visitation literally stepped into their, well, at that time, their night shift or their work shift. I've been praying for the last couple of weeks and been releasing to many of you that you begin to come to more of an awareness that God supernaturally is moving in your life, that you look at opportunities past your planned opportunities. Are you following what I'm saying? In other words, you see, we could plan God's activity in our life. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go do this. And what we find, if you really take a real close look at it and pull your calendar out, doing those things can actually distract you from, from seeing the opportunity God has for interruption in your life. The Bible tells us that the only thing that took place was an angel. And he encountered that the glory came upon them. And one scripture says that the glory of God was ablaze around them. In other words, we know that it shone ablaze. There was this Pentecostal fire, however you want to look at that. There was a change in the atmosphere. The room lit up something happened. I can tell you on many occasions overseas and even in as I was walking through Bible college and even in this church, I, 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 I run into angels constantly. And many times I don't even mention it because people get all weirded out on you. It's funny how Pentecostals get weirded out when they believe in supernatural. Don't really believe in supernatural. They believe in talking about it. Pentecostals like to talk about supernatural. They don't like to encounter supernatural. Because when you encounter supernatural, it burns your flesh. And all we want to do is put ointment on, not anointing. Ointment is works, by the way. Anointing means shifting. Listen to me. It's imperative that we learn going into this, this time that we're in that God wants to use you, sir or ma'am, to actually see demoniacs delivered. It's funny, I was... Didn't even say anything to me. I, I was at a, they took me to the movie house. I call it movie house. I know I'm old fashioned. They call it that. To see this Spider Man can't get home thing, you know. I'm not into all that stuff, but I went because my granddaughters and all. They always sit there. We took a whole row up, ate half a place out of popcorn. Chris likes to go because it's cheap and he gets free Slurpees. But we go in there and uh, I'm sitting there and my mind's going everywhere. I'm trying to make things out of, you know, supernatural. And there's such a call for supernatural. Everything's supernatural man, superhuman. Uh, so I'm just so my Miss Lila had to run to the ladies' room, and I I'm real I'm an old-fashioned guy. I don't let I don't I don't like teenagers, kids go to the bathroom. But I go with them. When I'm with them, I don't just send them down the hallway. I go with them because this day and age, I want to see who's walking out of there or walking in. Just telling you, that's just the way I am. Old Grandpa, call me what you want, but I guard them. 
And so she scooted out. I don't care if I missed five seconds. Of, you know, it didn't bother me. You know, I didn't care. But out there, I'm standing there and I'm minding my own business. I know that's hard to believe, but I was. And there was one lady behind the counter, and she slipped in the restroom. I look up, and all of a sudden, this cat manifested across the street, right in front on the streets of Paris. Imagine that. Spun around, shook his head, and then run out in the middle of the street and looked at me and spun around in the middle of the street. And I walked out and couldn't find him. I looked at him. I said, well, looky here what I just ran into. I begin to pray because you don't know. You know, I do believe this. I believe that the devil had a plan for that movie house that night. But where the devil messed up is I was there. I believe that. It's all my heart. But that, but them things happen. Karen will tell you, the boys will tell you, I go to McDonald's, I get growled at. It's not who I am. It's the God in me, but I'm God aware that my schedule and the way that I minister does not impress God. What impresses him when he allows, when I allow his suddenlies to interrupt my best laid plans. It's an unusual time for humanity on this earth, but it's not unusual time. You know what it is? It's God's right time. God's shifting, God's shaking, his, his manifestations are moving, and he began to give this great, great instrument uh, to the church, to these little bitty guys called shepherds, and I can go into that all, and I, do, I, I don't have time for that today. They were working in a weird shift. They were just up above the hill, and they had the sheep. Now listen, they were the shepherds that nobody liked to talk to. They were smelly. Nobody had anything to do with them, but they was the ones who raised the sheep that everybody sacrificed. At that time, these were the she shepherds up on the hill. Right below them was Jerusalem and the temple. They were outside the box. They were the ones that had their hands on the sheep, but yet the ones who slay the sheep and sacrifice them wouldn't have anything much to do with them. Are you following me? I think it's an incredible story how the untouchable in humanity was allowed to touch the unblemished sheep. That's a story about the today that we're in. How we pigeonhole our ministry. And we, we, won't, we, we only allow so many people in and around and we can only have things a certain way. We don't understand that God wants to use us if we get out of the way. The angel of the Lord brought a reason. And what happened was the angel brought with him not only clarity, but when God invades your space with his clarity, he brings calamity. Why? Because it rattles your best laid plans. And so what happened was, when the angel came in, he invaded their space with God clarity. And for a moment, calamity, calamity got a hold of them. Or in other words, there was what they thought chaos was actually Holy Ghost order. Because God likes to come into our best laid religious plans and bring what we think is chaos, but actually it's godly order. And people are menacing, menacing, menacing. They're missing the godly order because they're overtaken by the chaos of calamity because they don't understand the presence of God. Listen to me before we close. That's why it's imperative that there's not a man or woman or child that should not learn to run to the altar for clarity because you're going to walk out in the calamity of the devil and he wants you to think it's calamity and chaos when actually it's God order. And when you get in God's presence and you come into these assemblies, it's not just to look at Sister Billy Bob's hair or Billy Bob's car or Sister whatever and that. It's for you to get yourself in vertical line in the anointing of a corporate group that everybody says, man, look at there. And they're up there giving God the glory and they got fire dancing on their head. They got a Holy Ghost language coming out of them. That's a sound from heaven. So when they go out, what happens is they bring God's peace in the midst of a world of calamity and faithlessness. Now you think this is cool, and it is. I think I read so much into this. I see myself in it. But on my way to Jesus on Thursday, Friday, was a planned day, trust me. And that evening had to go to Indianapolis. God invaded my space, and I got a phone call and had to run in here. I was out helping Chris do some things and get some things in order. And I ran into my office, and when I ran into my office, calamity began to set upon me. 
I thought, man, this is wrong. You got a letter from a man of God. And you know how those letters go, amen? And so I'm reading that, and all of a sudden I had this cat that came in. I was ministering to him, and all of a sudden we just, we just stopped, got a guitar out, and we just started praising the Lord. The glory of God hit my office, and peace came in my office because I had to deal with stuff. And all of a sudden we got that out of the way because I was having to deal with something else that's more important. And that is planning the next Build the Body service in January. Over five churches was in here last month, two months ago, last, I don't even know, last month. And all of a sudden, now we're planning for the first year another Build the Body on a Wednesday night. And I'm already meeting with five of the pastors, four of the pastors on Wednesday. Yeah. You see, so it's outpouring that's getting bigger than just in here. So we're going to meet next week in here and we're planning the best we can for the build the body service and that's going to be on January the 5th wow we'll let you know that's on a Wednesday night I know that messes your schedule up we're going to come in here and there's going to be churches from all the city we're going to come back in here again and we're going to we're going to pray and praise and do like we did last time and was that not a powerful time we had especially when a 16 17 year old teenager gets up <coughs> and just spits out the word. Wednesday night, prayer meeting in here. Pow! God invaded and Zeke gets up and just begin to plead with God and call out, we need you, Jesus. And the glory of God hit Zeke right here in this altar area. Right, that old teenager was going off for Jesus. So, suddenly, Ollie gets up, reads the word. Pow! God breaks in through that Job 2.28. I believe it's beginning to take place. And then babies are starting to get up and prophesy and begin to speak the holy word. And man, did God rock my boat Wednesday night. I'm still over. I can't get over it yet, man. How that little guy gets up for them boys and release the power of God. It wasn't showboating. It was that God showed up. And let me tell you, if you can't get here on Wednesday nights, you need to make an effort to get in here. And I want to tell you something. You look at me. Our best laid plans and your best laid plans are great. Bible studies are phenomenal. You need them. But let me tell you, you need a prayer service in your life too. You need a prayer because the Bible says you are to be praying constantly perpetually and we need to know that prayer is in the very basis of our activity come on somebody come on somebody come on somebody you got to have a relationship with the father and you can't just know him by book you got to know him by relation and your flesh has to be encountered with the presence of the lord lift your hand father I'm releasing this now god help us cope with our schedule we are so stinking ministry busy that we're not oriented in the visual time of activity of your presence. God, I'm praying you send angels. Father God, to announce the great and joyful events, you're showing us now by the signs in heaven. Witness through prophetic words today, the very timing of the month, the very timing of the days. You're telling us, Father God, that there's a word in the house. There's a word in our city. Peace, clarity, instruction, commission, and then the suddenly comes forth. I said peace, clarity, instruction, and commission comes from us being in your faith. Father God, give us a faith. Father God, as Isaiah, I saw the Lord high and lifted up in his temple, and there wasn't anything room for anything else because his train, his presence filled the temple. Fill this temple with perpetual outpouring. Father, it is growing. Let our eyes be open to the greatness of what's taking place, to the years of prayer, to the efforts, Father God, and through the battles, and through the war cries, and through all the bruises. Let us stand. Let us stand. Let us stand. COVID has not stopped the move of God. It cannot stop a move of God. We break any fear that the enemy's trying to even stir up now, trying to tell us we can't gather, trying to strap us up and shut us up. I got news for you. God is in control and there is not anything from hell that will prevail against his mighty church. I ain't saying it. I'm not stirring that up in you. That's the word of a holy God. Somebody praise him in his house today. There's work to be done. It has to be done in his presence first. There's work to be done and we have to be led by him first. Somebody give him glory in this house. Amen. Ooh, I'm going through this. I'm blowing through this like a Pentecost in an altar call. God awareness, not only in this Christmas season, 
But God's teaching us to have God time management throughout the year that's ahead of us. He's given us a lifetime instruction manual for the end time. Shepherds adjusted and took time in their life to do what God had called them to do. He called them to worship. He verified it with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Host for clarity. And then he told them to go communicate, not just to baby Jesus, not just across Jesus, just like we saw in the video, to communicate the full Jesus, the only Jesus, the only one true living God. But let me warn you this morning with this, and I'll close. Shepherds had to make a choice that night on that godly invasion. They had to make a choice. They had to make a choice to communicate. Now watch this. American teenagers, by this study, send messages and receive an average of over 80 messages a day. I could tell you that most parents are that way. It says when drivers text, their collision risk is 23 times greater than when they're not texting. How many of you go down the road and see people doing this all the time? 15% of Americans say they're addicted to their email. 59% of those using portable devices check emails as soon as it goes off. It's crazy. 43% of users sleep near or with their phone so they can hear the incoming call. 40% consider email accessibility constantly has to be whenever they trip. In other words, they plan their trips whether there's a cell tower or not. 83% check their email once a day while they're supposed to be on vacation. Now, I'm convicted because I don't take vacation. You may be convicted because when you take vacation, you're always on your email. 43% check their emails the first thing in the morning. Daniel Webster said this one day, the most important thought I ever had was that for my individual responsibility to God. So I just challenge you this morning that God's invading and I got a lot of stuff I could preach and teach to you today. I feel like he's told me to stop. The challenge was, and I write these sermons to convict myself most of the time, is that we guard our relationship with this device more than that device. We talk to and through this device more than we talk to and through the Holy Word of God. We do. The addiction to this is incredible to me. When you go to restaurants and watch married couples not even talking but they're they're tech they're doing this i'm going to challenge you the first year to put your phone away for at least a week i'm going to challenge you to do it i'm going to challenge you to that i'm going to put a box in the foyer and i'm going to guard it i'm going to ask you to put your phone in that box and we're going to lock it in the safe wow challenge you that. I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to challenge my leaders to do that, to set an example. To turn your phone in to Deacon Luke Miller. We're going to put it in a box and we're going to lock it down for one week. Some of you will be on anxiety pills before the day's over. Listen, I've ministered for many, 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 many years. And let me tell you something. I can minister and have without one of these we didn't even have them. And we got along with mighty moves of God and God was moving. Didn't even have one. If I tell you the truth, as a man of God, if I did not have to use this because of the age we're in, if I ever retire, which is probably when I go to heaven, this I'll, I'll get rid of this. I won't have a cell phone. Get rid of it. The only thing I'll have is something that has a phone number on it. I may go back to the landline. I don't even know. I won't even have this. I promise you. This thing has invaded my life and my, my, my wife's life and my children's uh, uh, holidays and, and everything that I've had to walk away from my family because of stupid phone call. I'm just telling you. And it's interrupted the move of God 
not only in my life, but it has in your life. So I'm going to challenge you sometime in January, so don't quit coming in January, because I'll, I'll, <laughs> I want to nail you in, in February. <laughs> the eyes of Jesus is upon us. I think we could have a revival if we get rid of these. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Jesus didn't need it, did he? Word out. So this morning, I want to tell you Merry Christmas, but the challenge is before us. This is a Christmas like no other Christmas. It's not here yet. Things are rapidly taking place, and I just want to challenge and prepare you that it may get rough sailing, but we have Jesus and his, the wind of the Holy Spirit in ourselves. Amen. We're going to get through this because we're all going to go to heaven. We're going to make sure of that. Amen. I want you to stand in here for a moment. I ran out of time. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I'll rip that tank off open right now if you need to take a dip. But I want to challenge you to, some of us I won't see you in that for a while. I want you to make sure that you understand that this altar is not for looks and prettiness. We want to wear this out, and we do. I want you to make sure that you hit this altar. We need it going into holidays. Many of you are going to face family situations that are not great. Many of you are going to face things that sit across tables, and many of you are going to be broken. Many of you got family members that's broke your heart. There's relational things. Many people have family members that's lost as gooses and snowstorms. So before we go to this altar, I want you to stretch your hands towards Stan because Sheila's having knee surgery in the morning. And we're going to pray for Sheila's knee. We're going to pray for before Doc gets his hands on that knee. We're going to pray that God does a great healing work on her. Father, we pray for Sheila right now. We lift her up. God, we pray for healing in that knee. We pray, Father God, that she be totally healed. Father God, we pray for Doc's hands. Father God, and all the, uh, his helpers, and most of all, Holy Spirit, stand right next to her in that operating room. Father God, we just pray great blessings in her life. I pray for the body right here as they're stepping out to minister to their families. I'm praying that the glory of God sit upon them this holiday season in a way that, Father God, great God reports come in. Father God, I am thankful today that little babies went to bed with a brand new blanket and their heads on a brand new pillow because we got a part of that today. I thank God, Father God, that food went into bellies uh, at Thanksgiving time because of the, the, multi, the matrix ministries that are used and ministered and supported out of this house. Father God, I thank God for many who's getting food in their bellies, Father God. I'm thanking you today for veterans that have warm feet and babies that have warm hands and heads. Father God, I thank you for the body of Christ that souls are being saved, lives are being changed in the jailhouses and in the nursing homes. Father God, I'm releasing angelic intervention. <laughs> I believe that, Father, when we assemble back in the new year, there's going to be testimonies of angelic interventions and demonic activity that stopped because we were in the right place. And I thank you that I was in Paris that night. I thank you that I got to come against that demon in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, I open these altars now. I've released this word. We thank you for prophetic word. Let us come and absorb it for a few moments as we worship. I'm challenging you to step in this altar.